Hi, and welcome to Live at 525. This is Corinne speaking. I'll be your host this evening. And I'm here with Kylie Daly, who is a local artist and um, a recent grantee of the Community Arts Fund from BCA, and David Foss, who is a resident Hi. leader at Burlington Housing Authority. Um, he's part of the Resident Advisory Board, and he's on the Resident uh, Steering Committee at Decker Towers. And um, yeah, we're gonna be talking a little bit about some activities we have planned for the Art Hop coming up this uh, fall, some of the things that we're doing this summer at Decker Towers and other BHA properties leading up to that. And um, I wanna hear a little bit more about you both individually. Um, Kylie, would you like to say more about? Um, sure. Uh, so thank you for that introduction, Corinne. Um, I'm really excited to uh, be on the air today talking about these projects. Um, so I guess I could I could tell the story of how I got involved um, with the what we're going to be talking about today, artwork and um, art hop uh, with BHA residents. So um, this past winter, I was contacted by uh, a resident of Wharf Lane Apartment Buildings, which is a BHA property, um, Donna Walters, and. Uh, she had, uh, six months prior to that, formed an arts council with some other um, members of the Wharf Lane Residents Association uh, because over the years there have been so many complaints about the, the white walls and the just not really any visual stimulation in the common areas. Um, and so they formed the arts council to kind of figure out what, what would people want to see and how would they get the resources to make it happen? Um, so Donna, who's the, the resident um, who formed that art council, she met with Dorian Kraft, uh, who's the director of the BCA, um, to kind of get some ideas, where can we get funding to make this happen? Um, so she suggested pairing up with an artist from the community and applying for the community fund grant, which is a, f a fund created by the BCA, Burlington City Arts. Um, and so we designed a project that would be a way to, uh, I, I would um, come in and do workshops with residents to make art uh, together. Um, inspired by nature, Wharf Lane is right on the edge of the rail yard. It's, um, it's in a very uh, industrial part of town and residents really wanted to see more nature in their lives. So we're gonna be doing nature inspired art um, and uh, and yeah, and we were lucky enough to receive the grant, and so now we're starting to make things happen. Um, the Art Hop is going to be kind of the kickoff for this project. Uh, I'll be doing demos all weekend of the the technique called shadow painting that I developed for um, use in this project, uh, so that residents can kind of get a feel for it, get an idea of what are these workshops going to look like, um, and. I, don't know, I, I guess I'll stop there. I think that was a lot of information. Yeah, I actually, um, I would love to hear from David a little bit about what uh, resident association means and uh, what makes you, what got you involved in the resident association at Decker Towers and how has that changed uh, your interaction with your community there? Um, well, I've been living at Decker Towers for almost three years. And when I first got there, it was kind of quiet in Decker Towers, which was kind of nice but I really want to get more involved in the, in the uh, apartment setting there. Mm -hmm. And I got involved with the Resident Advisory Board first, and that is a group that each of the Burlington Housing Authority buildings have representation where they talk about policies, events, and me and a couple other folks are to um, represent Decker Towers, and then decided that we needed a little bit more input, a little bit more working together to make it a better living situation for all of us in Decker Towers, and then by reaching out to the other Burlington Housing mm. buildings as well. For those who don't know um, what Burlington Housing Authority is, uh, can you tell us where Decker Towers is and a little sure. bit about Burlington Housing Authority? Burlington Housing Authority 
is a whole series of buildings like Deco Towers, 101 um, North Cham 10 North Champlain, um, we have Wharf Lane, Bobbin Mill, there's family, organ um, family developments, there's senior developments, there's uh, all kinds of different situa living situations. And Decker Towers, where I lived, is a combination of folks with um, disabilities and senior housing. And a little bit different than some of the other housing. A um, little bit more, a few more challenges. And because we are, we are a fairly varied age range, trying to find common threads. And one of the things we've noticed is like getting together, doing art, mm. getting involved with uh, both Corinne and Kylie with the shadow arts and the Voices of Home project. We actually started out with a few folks and a lot of people are getting interested. So I think our uh, community is getting closer together. Mm. Um, that's a great cue to talk about the shadow painting that uh, Kylie started developing with the Wharf Lane residents and has done a little bit with Decker Towers. Do you want to talk about that, Kylie? Yeah. Um, so I, it's something that I, I just, you know, I came across um, playing around in my studio a couple years ago. I don't think it's, it's a completely original technique. I think a lot of people uh, have been drawn to the way that you can trace shadows and create beautiful artwork. Um, uh, so I, I came back to it when I was doing this project with Wharf Lane trying to figure out what kind of workshops could we do together um, because it feels like a very accessible way to make um, a beautiful artwork. Uh, you don't need to feel like you have to be trained as an artist to make uh, to make um, a painting inspired by the nature right outside your door. Um, it's, I use an overhead projector. Um, I think I should probably try and illustrate this with my website. Um, so I have um, an overhead projector uh, and I place plants that I gather just you know, I go for woods walks sometimes, but even right outside my studio building or right outside Wharf Lane, um, I found really nice, nice source material. I lay the plant on the projector, um, and then uh, there's a mirror which reflects it, and then a lens that magnifies it. So the shadow projects onto the wall of whatever I put onto the projector, um, and then that. I'm, I'm kind of like visual with this, it's hard to explain it. I'm, hopefully this is making sense. Um, and then there's like a piece of paper on the wall or a canvas leaned up against the wall or something on an easel that it, it, the shadow is being captured on. And then trace it with a pen or a brush and ink, paint, a colored pencil, whatever is the material that like appeals to you. Um, and then once you've traced that shadow of the plant onto the paper or the canvas, that can be the jumping off point mm. for a drawing or a painting. Um, so I was doing this last week in those, the art making sessions that um, David was talking about at Decker Towers. I was, I was just tracing a whole bunch of um, plant shadows and with pencil and then handing them off um, and some residents took them back to their room to color on their own time. Um, we had at least one person coloring right there. Mm. Many other people doing just freestyle paintings which were turning out really well. Yeah. Um, so there, so it, can, you know, it can work on a number of levels. That was just using pencils and colored pencils um, to create artworks together. Uh, and then um, for the Wharf Lane, I'm going to give the res, because I've received this community fund grant, I'll have the resources to get uh, paint and canvases. Um, and so the residents will have a chance to do the same technique, but with um, the, the chance to use like the fine art supplies and make a really lasting artwork that can hang on their walls. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I definitely, um 
I think uh, last Saturday was when our most recent art session. That was mm -hmm. uh, maybe the second time we had done that. And I was really struck by the different environment um, the art session had than uh, compared to when we were meeting as a resident association. There's this kind of like relaxation in the room and comfort in being there. And um, I definitely found the when you were giving people something to work in and like uh, color in, like the outlines of a piece that uh, was kind of beautiful and specific, it was this calming effect and um, people really were able to engage in ways that they weren't engaging uh, during resident meetings. What's nice, we were talking Art Hop is coming up and one of the inspirations to do these drop-in sessions was to get folks excited about art. Mm -hmm. um, part of Art Hop, part of the things at Art Hop is the BHA residents will have an opportunity to display some of their art. And Kylie and Corinne both, they've dropped in. Um, we've had color paint, we had pencils, um, and then Kylie's idea of bringing the uh, different leaves and different uh, outlines up on the board People are taking that and coloring in their own ideas, and people are getting excited. And that's what we were hoping that people, mm -hmm. with the drop in art sessions, I'll get people interested in the big thing, which mm -hmm. is Art Hop coming up in September. Why do you think it's important to engage residents in the Art Hop this fall? Like, what, how is that going to affect the residents, or why, why is that going to be a fun? I guess, of course, it sounds fun, but like, what's the importance of it? Well, one, it is definitely an eye-opener for the community. Mm -hmm. Two, a lot of folks, especially I believe in like Decker Towers, Wharf Lane, Bob and Mill, where the Art Hop session is going to be, um, get a chance to show a little bit of pride. And I'm amazed just in my building how many different people are involved in art and excited about art. And even the folks that kind of diddle in it, you know, they get real excited and it's something that's gonna, I hope, just catch fire and then we'll have all kinds of people looking at what we have to offer. Yeah. Do you have anything to add, Kylie? Um, yeah, it's, it's something that I talked about with Donna when we were putting together the um, grant proposal mm -hmm. for this project, um, is that you know, so many people, when they come into the building, be it the, um, uh, be it the visiting nurses or the mental health services or even the police, they are coming there uh, when residents are in crisis and they're seeing only one side of these people. Mm -hmm. um, and so with, with the, the project over at Wharf Lane, making canvases to permanently install on their walls, they're going to be having um, an open house next spring uh, to show off what they created, um, where they can invite these same people who usually come when they are experiencing difficulty and need help. They're actually inviting them to show off like these really beautiful sides of themselves and their abilities and what, and you know the the way that they've made this project happen by forming the arts council and mm -hmm. so yeah I think I think art is um, a really important way to humanize people, um, to show that there's really great sides of people that might, that, you know, we might forget about, like, if, if the, if you're only going to provide services, you might forget that these people have a lot to offer as well to the community. Mm. I wonder if you have any big takeaways, um, from working with residents and attending some of these resident association meetings, because uh, you've attended a couple. You, you attended the one at Wharf Lane, and yeah. you've attended some of the Decker Towers meetings. Um, well, I feel like I'm learning a lot just about how how to make stuff happen with you know not a lot of resources, um, and how to figure out what are the resources that are there, like uh, when. I've seen the residents in action at their at their meetings. Like you know, they're 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 planning some like their planning skills, their organizational skills, 
um, communication with each other, making sure that like no one's feelings are hurt. Um, there's there's a lot of really important skills that I mean I'm personally still developing as an artist, so I feel like I'm learning a lot there. Yeah, no, I agree. When we have these events, people are so many differences, but they do support each other in the arts and. Nobody makes fun of anybody, and um, art can encompass so many different things between painting and drawing and photography. And again, it just blows my mind how many different, where different people come from. We have folks from many different continents, different folks that live in the buildings. And the biggest way that they do communicate is through art and pictures. We have several folks that come to our drop in that don't speak any English, but they sit down and they smile and they, everyone kind of pats them on their back and that's a big plus to get everyone involved in our community. How many people live in your building, David? Um, Decker Towers, we have about 160 residents. A lot of people. It's 11 floors of folks with a lot of differences, but we find that our strength is, is all the differences we have. David, you spend a lot of time, um, you know, organizing meetings and uh, preparing for meetings and going to the resident advisory board and uh, supporting fellow residents. And I just wonder, do you personally feel like um, the work that you are a part of is making a lasting impact at Decker Towers? I think so. I first started, you know, over two years ago getting involved with the other buildings and now we've developed a pretty good system within our own building and we're starting to reach out to other buildings and trying to get everybody to work together. Mm -hmm. I mean the housing situation is something that's not going to go away right away and it does take a lot of money, a lot of effort and through Kylie and Corinne and hopefully together with, with the limited resources we learn to adapt and maybe develop skills that we can kind of aid each other in and develop, you know, you know, learn something new and provide that communication and support with other residents. Mm -hmm. When you say the housing situation isn't going to go away, what is that referring to? Um, there are a lot of folks that have limited means and need places to live. I mean, I think Burlington does a pretty good, pretty good effort so far, but there's just so many people with layoffs, worry about money, with illness. I mean, people are surprised. I mean, folks that li I live with, a lot of those folks never intended to be in a situation where they're in limited income and things happen in their life. And so we do the best we can. I know a, a lot about your personal story because they are interviewing you for the Voices of Home project. And I know that you have a personal, you can really relate to that statement. I wonder if you feel, feel like speaking to that at all. Well, I don't know. I mean, I just, I went from a situation where I did have a good job and good place to live and a lot of support and I basically lost my, my, my lost my mom, lost my house, lost my job, ended up primarily homeless, and then started working with folks and myself and got out of it. And mm -hmm. hopefully with all the things I've learned there and with the other folks I've met, we're learning to help each other go through all the different things. What, how are you inspired to be such a prominent leader in your community? What was the, how, how did you f find that energy and that motivation? Um, well, the people around me motivate me. I mean, there's so many good people and the energy grows from, like I said, the differences we all have, have formed to make a very strong bond. And we're all trying to keep our housing it's uh, funds get cut all the time, and it's ever changing. But we're all trying to fight mm -hmm. to keep our spot. And 
Yeah. Kylie, I know that um, you do a lot in the community besides just uh, Besides uh, this project that you're working on, I wonder if you could talk a little bit about uh, the poetry show and what other k kinds of things that you do to be involved in the community. Um, well, the poetry show is a, a show really similar to this one, uh, another live at 525 show. Um, and we have kind of a broad focus, so we call it uh, Arts and Activism, the poetry show. So pretty much anything we want to talk about that falls under those three terms we'll talk about. Um, and my favorite thing is when we're interviewing guests. Um, Corinne actually was my guest last month. Uh, and it's, I don't know, TV is like, I kind of stumbled into it. I did inform the poetry show. I, I uh, was asked to be a co-host after it had already been established for um, several months. Uh, so, sorry, I'm losing, lost the train. Um, yeah, it's it's fun to talk with people, and like it's a cool medium for hearing stories. Mm -hmm. um, TV, like you know, when you sit down for a formal interview with someone, you might hear a part of their story that would have taken you like forever to get to just you know in, in small talk and like casual meetings. Um, so we got to hear last month on the Poetry Show, we got to hear Corinne's whole story about how she got into working with affordable housing and storytelling projects, which is really interesting. And I've known Corinne for a while and never knew all that. Um, another, another project that uh, I'm part of is a friend of mine, Connor, um, does drawing nights. Uh, he started doing it this past winter, um, very similar to what is happening at Decker Towers right now with the community art making events. Um, people just come with some paper and pencils or pens, whatever project they're working on or just want to doodle. And we spend usually about three or four hours together um, drawing and socializing and uh, we'll have music. Yesterday we had um, a special musical guest. Uh, Edward Burke did a workshop and demo um, showing us all about his logger phones, which he makes, a, a folk instrument that um, Edward's a, a local artist uh, who lives and works in the South End. Um, he makes these logger phones, and so it was a chance for some new people to get exposed to his instrument and how to play it, and we did some sing-alongs. Oh, cool. and, um, and so it was kind of fun for everybody. Edward got to practice his his workshop and we got to experience it and then we all drew together afterwards. Um, so those are the kind of things that are really exciting to me I guess as an artist is, is uh, I mean my my independent art practice is really important but I like the way that art can be used to bring people together um, you know through through the medium of, of, of workshops and just drop in drawing sessions or um, using the TV as a medium to interview and get stories out there. I was going to say it's a good way to get stories. Yeah. Um, like I'm not really very good at paints and stuff. I do a little drawing, but my forte, I guess, is photography. And I've learned people drawing and painting, the stories of how they got them involved, and stories of where they are, where they live their favorite kind of things and it's kind of activism in a sort of way because the stories will get out there and hopefully uh, can help other people in other situations. That actually was one of my questions. I was like, what is this correlation between art and acti activism? I wonder <laughs> if you have any thoughts about that. Well, I mean, I think for me, my art, a lot of my art is like inspired by nature and beautiful colors and like time spent in the woods and um, it's you wouldn't look at it and think like this is political art uh, but over the last couple of years I'm I work in a studio with several other artists and oftentimes members of my studio will get really involved in a political project and use the studio as the workshop for creating the signs or the or the public art or whatever it is that is going to aid in their demonstration or their fight for this or that. Um, so I've had a lot. Of, I've spent a lot of time 
amongst that type of art that's more directly political mm -hmm. and and spend a lot of time thinking about like how does my art fit in with this and 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 kind of started to see that uh, just the choice of whatever you want to depict like that's a political choice you're making you're saying like this is so important enough to me that I want to you know create this big representation or publish this book or or whatever it is and bring this thing into the world and bring people's attention to it um, you know so for me like I'm, I might be making very uh, kind of happy like joyous nature inspired artworks um, and that's because I I think that stuff is important and I want to have a place for it mm. and then the I guess when it becomes more activism is is when you find more direct ways to draw people into that world um, and ways you know to like with the the War Flame project Donna identified me as the artist because because it's colorful and beautiful and is going to be you know a bright spot in their building which is something that they really wanted. Well I think too over time you notice different eras when there was a lot of trouble or despair or in the world, different art forms have come out of those, different, mm -hmm. different song, eras of different music, different colors, and the same thing is happening. And I think more and more people are realizing that we need to get together instead of fight each other. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I see that more and more in the different arts and the more, you know, the music is changing that way again. And the, this is a good way to express in dialogue as well as the visual aspects. Um, I also am thinking about our art sessions and Kylie, you were, uh, you encouraged me to like leave them pretty structureless. Mm -hmm. And I wonder like how that, I was really nervous about that, <laughs> but um, you, you were pretty confident it was a good choice. Can you? Yeah. Well, I think that actually came out of my first experience with group art making sessions like that, which was several years ago. Um, I spent some time in the the psychiatric ward at UVM, um, and for panic attacks and other things like that. And um, the the way it's set up up there is everyone gets a room, and then in the middle of all the rooms, there's there's two common rooms. One is like where you eat, and the other one is basically just an art room, like a big table and chairs and a ton of supplies. Um, and I found so much value. Like that was the most healing part of the whole experience for me, was just being in that art room with the when it was unstructured and we could just do whatever we wanted and getting to know other people who are also going through like really hard mm -hmm. times in their mental health and you know kind of being able to feel inspired by what I was seeing come out of mm -hmm. them you know being like oh this person's also going through something really hard and they're making something really beautiful and like you know so maybe I can do that too you know maybe we're all going to be okay together um, and there were also times that were more structured activities, like an art therapist would come in, and it just, it, it never had the same, like, feel, it, it didn't have the same feel to it where this is about us, this is about the patients. Mm -hmm. It felt, you know, it's more about, like, this project that the art therapist is bringing to us, which might have its value in some settings, but for me, what I really needed was to get, get to know other people who are going through hard times and, like, be able to see ourselves in a really positive light. Wow, it's really powerful. Thank you for sharing that. Well, yeah. Art Hop's coming up, and I think uh, folks should go and attend and see the uh, Voices of Home, see Kylie and the Shadow Art, and just drop in and uh, see all the different, different interpretations. And uh, there's going to be a cheese open house, which is going to be good for everybody. So. Yeah, everyone loves cheese. Uh, our hop is going to be <laughs> September 8th, 9th, and 10th. And um, thank you guys so much for joining me. This is Kylie. This is David. Thank you. Um, also, uh, our hop will be in the Bob and Mills Center, which is off of Pine Street. Uh, our session. Sorry. <laughs> thank you.